Hello and welcome Sunday Creatives. I am super excited to share with you this entire design that just kind of unfolded over the last about two and a half hours. I've been prepping and just kind of playing with things. Um, so you guys are probably seeing the sign. So that's really all I'm going to show you until we like start unfolding this. So this sign, um, obviously those of you that know me really well, know that when we got our property here in Washington, we inherited a trio of chickens. And I actually love my chickens. I call my chicken babies. So when I saw this sign at the tractor supply, I thought, oh, how perfect would this be for a chicken themed Christmas wreath, which when you look for those on Pinterest, when you look for them on Etsy, you don't really see a chicken wreath you see like an evergreen form that's like in the sh shape of a chicken and that's it with like a little Christmas bow on it there is no official chicken wreath so tonight we are making the official chicken Christmas wreath using this sign which is going to basically be the chickens night before Christmas wreath kind of thing I think is how I'm labeling it so if you have a tractor supply, you can get your sign from the tractor supply. Um, I'm going to show you how we're going to go ahead and um, wire one of six sections of our 14 inch dollar to wreath frame. Um, we are going to be using a cotton drift um, mesh because I thought that was perfect. It's kind of like a snowball mesh. So I'm trying to go with that whole Christmas theme because nobody has Christmas farmhouse ribbon per se. So it's like either farmhouse or it's Christmas. It's not anything combined. So who knows, maybe next year there will be. Um, so the first thing that um, we're gonna do is number one, if you like this design and wanna replicate it, and I hope that you do, um, cause that's always my goal. Click the share button, share it to your page. You'll have everything that you need. You can go back, watch the replay. Uh, take a few moments at the very, you know, as you're watching the tutorial and jot everything down, where everything came from, where all the measurements are. Everything's always included in the tutorial and it surprises me that most people don't watch it to get it all out. Um, but that's what I used to do when I first started is if I wanted to know, I watched and I took detailed notes. So um, if you're new, welcome. I'd love to welcome you to um, our house. It is super, super cold outside. It's like, well, it's not super cold. It's 52, super cloudy. We're supposed to get rain for like the next 10 days. So let's get started. So 14 inch Dollar Tree wreath frame. It comes with six sections. I'm gonna show you how we're doing one. And then you would just replicate that all the way around. If you wanna see it wired in its entirety, I do have a video on YouTube entitled how to wire a 14 inch dollar to wreath ream with pipe cleaners. Um, so the first thing you're going to do is right in between the welds, you're going to, um, I do two wire rings together because it creates stability on your wreath form. Your pipe cleaners don't flop. You don't have to glue it. You just get to put it on and then move on. And then you're going to do the same on the bottom two. We're going to take another beige one. I'm going to use this and the weld mark and try to find a midway point here. And we're going to tie that on. And then I'm going to do, let's cut this off. There we go. And we're going to do the same on the other side. That way, each of the six sections will have a grand total of three in each of them. That means six on the inside, 12 to the outside for a grand total of 18. So with that being said, um, I'm going to show you how you are going to take your cotton drift mesh. We're going to do the ruffle method because we have a lot that's going on this and I can't wait to show it to you. Um, so I want something that's full and flat so that it will accommodate everything that I need to put on it. So this particular deco mesh, you can get it at craft outlets called cotton drift mesh. Um, and this is a natural in white. Um, let me put our sign over here. And 
we are going to just look at a midway point up our mesh, which is really nice when you have the snow drift. You just kind of pick one and then just kind of pull it towards you, kind of keeping the one that you were eyeballing right in the middle. It's going to zigzag back and forth. It's okay. People call this a bow tie, a ruffle, a scrunch. Is there anything else that's called? Um, and then you're going to take the finished edges, which means not where you cut the finished part, and you're going to place that right on the outside one. Okay? And you're going to twist your pipe cleaners on two times super tight, and then each of the each of the sections is done exactly the same. If you look at it, this is just one. So this really overlaps this one. It really overlaps this one. The point of the middle is just to create a filler between the two. That's all. We're going to be focusing more on the outside of our wreath as we come around. So I like to tackle them um, in the order they come. It just makes it easy so I don't lose one of them in the midst, which I've done. Um, so here I'm going to push these back because I need to get to my middle and I'm going to slide my middle right in here. Another two twists. And then this one I'm actually going to take and put underneath the one that I had before because it's our filler. I'm going to push my pipe cleaners to the top. If you're a first time wreath maker just starting and you're not sure should I cut pipe cleaners or not, wait till the very end and then make your decision because then that way you don't have to worry about trying to come back in and add additional deco mesh if you need it. Okay. Last piece. We're doing the same thing since this is going on top of our middle. We still need to push that to the side so that we can get a free and clear shot to where our other piece is going to go. Same thing, we're gonna make sure that it goes over our inside piece and that our inside piece covers that section perfectly. So this is how each of your six sections will look by the time you're done. I think that's what size of the mesh cut to you. Uh, great question. I didn't. I didn't do that. Um, mm -hmm. each piece is cut to twenty inch ruffles. Twenty inches, Athena. And you will have to do, um, rotary cutter because of the snowdrift mesh, the or what they call cotton mesh. It doesn't. It burns. It doesn't cut. So you'll you'll be able to cut it so far, and then it starts to smoke, and you know as it goes through each layer. Shirley said, oh, wow, I have three crafters going live tonight, but I chose you tonight. Thank you, Shirley. Oh, thanks, Shirley. And, uh, hey, Julie. She said, I know you love your new house. How do you all like your new setup? I love it. We're still... Struggling a little bit on the internet. But... Um, we're getting better, yeah. so I can't wait to get it to where we can start doing that front to front. So we just got it established to where everything seems to be stable for the overhead. I kind of felt that this needed an overhead look. So do you guys have any other questions on this particular setup here? If not, I'm going to go ahead and go and... Joanne, will... knows, Joanne, this is not a pancake wreath. It's just a standard ruffle. No. So, and that's great. Some people automatically think that this is a pancake wreath. A pancake wreath has six on the inside and six on the outside. So by doing the ruffle method, you're adding an additional third more mesh. Um... And if you were doing a pancake, you would have one on each weld, and then you would have one on the in-between. So it's very thin. That works for storm doors. This is not storm door friendly. Okay. What? I can't pin. You can't pin? <laughs> Probably uh, because you... of my status. Uh, I, I you gave admin. you I know, but admin so. status. So right. there you go. I gave up my tablet. Okay, so I did all of those. I'm going to just simply take these back out and we're going to use them and fill in my last of my sections. So we're back to putting one right here in the middle. And 
in this particular design, I knew I am not going to be needing the inside six. So I have removed them as I have added them. Three, four, five. And I'm just going to snip these out. And you just tuck this one back in. Remember, this is our inside. So I need to make sure my outside piece goes right over the top. And then I'm going to get this one ready for my um, outside one. So let's go ahead and remove this so we're not wasting. Just like this, we're going to drop that right inside because then we will have completed our base because you don't need to watch me do that 18 times. Okay, so this again goes over our interior one, but now as we get ready to make the jump, did you notice that there's no interior one for these two? So what you want to do is when you're getting ready to move to the next section, you're gonna take your outside one, either one, whichever direction you go, and you're just going to lay those so that your pipe cleaners are in the middle. And then when you remove the other two, Hi everyone, Cheryl said say hello to your chickens for me. I will. <laughs> so this is this beautiful just like it is. Thank you. Okay, so this one's going to go plop right on top of the other ones. And then we're just going, I like to take my ends and fold them. That way they don't continue to fray. And then, see what's done here? Is on the outside now I can see all my pipe cleaners as I go around my wreath. They're all accessible to me. So this is our base for that wreath. Okay, ribbon tails. Um, just like I said, nobody makes chicken farmhouse Christmas ribbon. So you have to think about what can I possibly put on there that looks like this one. Um, so this just won't stay where I want it to go. Um, there's some holly berries on here. It's kind of like a red and white with a green around the outside. So I took those colors and I paired it with, and I'm going to show you my pairings. Um, the first one is I found this really pretty Noel with a like gingham, like a red and tan gingham. So I thought that looked really good for a Christmas themed ribbon. And then I'm pairing it with um, just a simple pine branch ribbon. This is from Hobby Lobby. The one underneath was from Joann's about two or three years ago. So the inch and a half are cut to 14 inch pieces, or the two and a half are cut to 14 inch, and the inch and a half is cut to 19 inch. So these are going to be the pairings for these. So let me show you what this looks like when we put this in. And I'm going to put this on all of the tan. So I fold them in half just so I can see where middle is. And then we're going to gather up because we want to make sure the Noel is facing the correct way. So we're going to pull up this. Yeah, this is a new design for Kat. Um, so the sign is more of a burgundy. It's really a dark, dark red. Mm -hmm. So it's like a cream and burgundy. So here we have the Noel facing out and then we're taking our inch and a half that is already dovetail cut because I just make sure all my ribbons prep like a sous chef. We're going to go up about two inches from the top. So just drop it down here, kind of gather it inside. <coughs> You're going to drop it right inside here. Two twists. <coughs> I was trying to think, am I putting... Anything Anna, in here no or not? You said she watched the replay. Oh, Anna? Yeah. We kind of just awesome. fast forwarded. Yeah. Um, so I don't know yet. So I'm not going to remove my pipe cleaners. I think there's something else that's going to go in there. I know I want to incorporate raffia. I'm just not sure where yet. <laughs> and I apologize for my coughing. Um, we had a, a rough go of it the last week before the rains came. 
um, our air quality got really horrible. And so to be outside breathing that, we were breathing in all the fire and the ash um, particles or whatever they call it, particulates that are in the, the air. And so I should have stayed inside and I didn't. I was outside doing um, from chores. The, from the goat rock fire. Yes, which hopefully is out now. So that's good. And then um, as you put these in, I like to put my two and a half inch between the inch and a half so that you can see both of them. Okay, now flipping over, what else do we do? Well, I found this really super pretty ribbon uh, from Sam's Club and it just has Merry Christmas on it. And I thought the colors are subdued. They're enough that it's not like in your face, here's Christmas, but it's a very nice, It is, it's basically red, green, and black on um, that natural canvas. I thought we would do double bows on this one. Leslie says she actually has that sign. Yeah. She hasn't used it yet. She got it at TSC. Tractor Supply. Tractor Supply, yep. Yep. Thank you, Anna. Anna sent 200 stars. And Cheryl, yes, she has done a charity for this. This is going to go to a family in need for Thanksgiving, right? It's going to help feed a family for Thanksgiving. What, the stars? Yeah. Yeah, the stars are for supporting a family for Christmas. And I think we're right, or not Christmas, Thanksgiving. I think right now we're at $63 from all of your donations contributing to the Facebook star. So that's where all that money's going. So if there's anything left over, we just give it to whoever's next in line that's in need. Um, so we're doing double bows. And I thought it'd be fun, because we haven't done this before, is alternate. So we're going to do green with the tan stitching, which is from Joann's, um, with this red, um, kind of like it's a creamy white and green gingham. And then um, on the next one, when we get to that, we are gonna switch it and we're gonna do the red with the tan with the gingham. So it's gonna be like this nice, cool little blend of a double bow. And remember, if you do double bows on the wreath, you can't do double bows on both. You just run out of room. So a double bow is basically we start it the same way we do our half bow. Same thing, gather about two inches, hold on to that, grab your next. We're going to gather this in. And then you're going to crisscross them like this. And then you're going to drop that right inside your right where your ribbon tail is. And this one I know we're not doing anything with, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this extra off. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna tuck this down behind my ribbon so that I can open my tail. And then we have, um, it's a loop with the green tails, and then here it's gonna be um, the green with the gingham tails. So just like that. And same thing, you can, um, you know, get that to where it outlines your ribbon and then you can see both. But I thought that that would just make for a really nice country type of Christmas look for this particular type of wreath. So those were my ribbon choices for here. So we're going to go through and get this one going so we can have everything done kind of some stars but it blinks at me it blinks yeah. um that's interesting yeah i've never heard that before Cheryl. we'd have to google that and put like what why i'm trying to send stars on mm -hmm. facebook and i'm getting a blink like it's blinking does anyone know what that means somebody might know Maybe it means you have to purchase more stars? Um, I don't know. So, these ones... Debbie said, Church Supply is wonderful. If you have a Royal King, you'll love it too. We don't have a Royal we King. We don't have a Royal King. I did yeah. look that one up because I am in need of coffee grind bedding for my chickens. Because yeah. people say it has to be the non-caffeinated and only Royal King sells it. So, there's that. 
And so I looked up, do we have a rural king? And there is not. Not anywhere in the state. Hey, Cheryl. She said she's just going to send it from the Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you. Sonny Dreamy said, Hi, Cat and Steve. I loved when you filled in the whole mesh all the way around because you used to talk and teach us in depth a whole lot more of anything that you wanted to know. It took more time, but very interesting. Very interesting regarding all topics. Just miss it. Aww. It sounds like Sonny maybe was in the private group. Well, what is it that you're missing? I guess that would be my first question. Um, I'm trying to always remember that in every single Facebook Live, there is likely to be somebody who is tuning in for the very first time. Mm -hmm. So taking and explaining things like why I lay the mesh the way I do? Why do I line up my pipe cleaners the way I do? Why am I, you know, doing this method? Mm -hmm. um, so that um, the new person learns just as well as the um, an older person that... A seasoned person. Yeah, that hasn't... They're like, oh, I never really thought of that before. So let us know if you have a particular question. It's the reason why we do Facebook Lives. There are some people who would argue, look, just get on with it. I'm only here for the tutorial. Um, for those people, I'd say my private group is so beneficial for you because you can benefit from exactly what it is that you're looking for. Just a you know, super simple tutorial. And then you're in and out getting what it is that you're looking for. Here it's talking to the people that are asking legitimate questions. And because it is a teaching video, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Thank you, Cheryl. This is going to be another amazing read. Thank you, Cheryl. She sent 500 stars. Thank you, Cheryl. And Cheryl said, I love your post on your new adventure. Please keep sharing. Okay. Because I was going to ask about that. If people wanted me to just completely go off topic and just create, I don't know, Cat's Creations farm post. Because um, I tried to just not, you know, not be all about wreath making, but um, let you guys know what's going on. This was my inspiration because I love my chickens. Um, you can never really have a... A down day if you walk out to a chicken coop and you see chickens running at you from afar <laughs> they're just hilarious if you've never seen it yeah. they just run so comical and I was like how can you be in a bad mood that just is funny well, okay. when, when you're done are you gonna take the photo from there Yes, so as long as we have some good light, I'm actually going to take this and put this on my chicken coop door because we have a full-size door that we can get into the coop. Um, and I thought we'll take a picture of it actually on the, the coop door because that was our inspiration point for that. So I don't know if you guys watched what I did. So here we did green on the right a uh, gingham on the left and then I switched it so that we're toggling different colors and uh, different ways of doing it I guess. I'm not just doing the same look for my half bows. I'm kind of changing it up so they're just not only are they different colors but they're different colors on either side. So it's just subtle differences like that that I hope that our clients love. Hubby said, love hearing about your days and adventures don't stop. Okay, good. So I said, yes, please, I'll move to the country in Texas. Texas is also a nice state. We thought about Texas, but we didn't want to deal with the humidity in the summertime. No, we <laughs> wanted rain. Lots of rain. And it's coming. So... Okay, there we did the green. We alternated it back. So our solid is now going to the right. And then we'll move to this side. Sure, said I would love more videos on the farm. Okay, we'll post more videos. We'll post like videos of the orchard and the grape. Yeah, we had we have a set deer. of deer that have been coming and they yeah. used to only come at night because they were a little gun shy of people. Um, and now we have a mom who brings her twins every 
every morning and every evening before it gets dark. And when we got our first fall rains, these poor deer were standing out in the rains just being pummeled by the rain. And they're standing out there still like, uh, where's our corn? And we're like, well, we kind of didn't think you would be out here. Yeah. Carol, the sign is from Tractor Supply. Tractor Supply. <laughs> Oh, I can't wait to show you the way that we're decorating this chair either. So, Cat's not doing candy cane. Cat is doing Christmas at the farm. Yep. So, that is our whole theme this year with our Christmas decor. Because I thought, why not? It's a little bit different. Hi, Linda. Yeah, Linda said Texas gets some bad weather. Yeah, they get some freezing, really bad freezing weather too. Frances says, uh, Kat, do you ever make any Christmas sweats? Yes. Yes, I do. We just did a, we did a winter mailbox swag. And um, in the past, we've done some corner swags that are great for people who want something for a corner of a mirror. Or we had a cabinet that just had one single cabinet on it. And it was so difficult to decorate. And a corner swag worked perfect on the end. She also said, you need to put all the, your prayers in a prayer book. Are that the way you pray? Aw. Okay, you can do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cheryl, you can collect them all and transcribe them for me. Hi, Wilmine. She says it's been a while. Hi, Hi girl. Wilmine. How are you? She went and said a few people did not expect it. Yeah, I think they're starting to they expect, they it. expect it pretty much around the same time. And so now, yeah, with their babies, it's like, um, they came at lunchtime today, which really was odd for us. And I said, I guess maybe she senses the weather's going to get ugly. So um, we've been going into our orchard and removing all of the excess apples because they're falling off the tree anyway. Um, and so we've been putting those out for the deer. So they've been having apples, um, grapes, because our grape vineyard is like dropping more on the ground than yeah. anything. So I was like, I mean, oh, amazing grapes, we're kind of sick of eating Sweet. grapes at this point. Sweet, seedless grapes. Oh, right? Yeah. You're not sick of, of, de of dealing with those yet? Eat a bunch a day. Okay. <laughs> I'm kind of done. Like we have to feed our neighborhood squirrels all year round. <laughs> we used to do that. Until they had and expanded their family. Then it was like crazy. We had squirrels coming out the wazoo. Yeah. And then we got hawks that came. And thankfully right now, knock on wood, um, we don't have the hawks. No, we just have those stellar jays, right? Yeah, the stellar jays. Which are depleting um, our bird seed faster than we can fill it up. Well, I mean, yes, we left California. We moved out last month. Yes, mid-September. So we are in Cinnabar, Washington. We moved to Washington Population for the rain. Just over 600. <laughs> we love it here. Every Like, we just went and found the cutest place to have breakfast on, you know, a regular morning. Because there's, I mean, they have your franchise companies out here, but we don't miss the franchise places. Nah, like, we don't we really miss don't. the Red Lobsters and... Olive Gardens and stuff like that. Um, yeah. We're just supporting the local community now. And we love it. And we're learning about the history. We're, we were going to yesterday, but we got caught at. We we're going to take a mushroom hunting class at the library. Where they teach you how to hunt wild mushrooms. Which ones are good and which ones are not. <laughs> so I was telling Steve, this is going to be so fun. Mm -hmm. Like, just getting out, meeting our community, supporting our local community. And we've, in California, you're just one of the rats in the rat, or in the rat race. Kelly, that's awesome. She said, I made the ribbon and yarn candy cane wreath. Oh, nice. We yarns, did that Friday. Yeah, the yarn snowman last night. My bodabra, my bodabra will be here tomorrow so I can finish them both. Nice. I awesome. can't wait. If you want to send me pictures, you can email me at info at catscreationsandmore.com. Mm -hmm. Linda said she saw a bighorn sheep. Really? Went to her sister-in-law's place yesterday. They are beautiful. Oh, how nice. Wildlife, right? Mm -hmm. 
Carol people. says we need to learn how to can. Yes, you are right. Yes. That's what I was Eat telling you. Steve. I looked up recipes on Eat. how to make apple butter. Um, so I'm going to be pulling down the last of our apples and we're going to be making homemade applesauce and then homemade apple butter. So, and I'm sure I'll be sending that home to my dad as well. I came up one short. I didn't have all six. Oh, right there. I didn't have that. It's been there. I don't think you... Yeah, I didn't grab that. It was missing from the, the bunch. What do you guys think of the colors? Do you think the colors are going to work well? Yeah. Well, not you. <laughs> you help me look for them all. I'm like, I need help. We need to look for a ribbon that's like farm themed, but um, it's still Christmas. So, um, and I forgot to cut these ones off. I got so busy that I forgot to remove this one and this one. We can make pumpkin butter and peach butter. We don't have we, peaches. Well, we have peach trees. We, have we a just peach trees. We can see if they'll produce any trees. Yeah. So I think our drought will be over, and then I don't think that the people who lived here before took care of the orchard um, very well because oh, yeah. um, there was no peaches that we saw, and some of the apples just did not produce. I think so a plum, nothing. We want to make sure that we stay organic all the way through. Hi, Gail. Gail is on. A lot of them said, yeah, they love the colors. Colors are perfect. Nice. And I love these um, ribbons because they're so country-like. You said, love watching you and Steve. Well, you're watching her. You just hear me every once in a while. But you filled all the questions, so... I can just keep going. Mm -hmm. Okay, our last crisscross, and then we will. Oh, Anna, that's awesome. We'll probably take you up on it. She said, um, if you need any recipes or help with canning, please ask. Please ask. She's happy to help. Oh. She's been canning for over 25 years. I definitely want to do that. Charlotte said, can't wait to the treehouse. I want to be the first visitor. Uh, yes. So, for those of you that don't know, part of our property is about eight pine trees deep so we've been clearing out our forest so that um we can build a tree house and we're going to do that as our guest room yeah we've been clearing out the, like, the, the bottom eight feet where there's all the dead underbrush underbrush yeah we've been clearing that out to kind of clear the back area out okay so let us fashion our bow we'll get our bow started um, so we are using, I think this is one, two, three, four, five. All this ribbon is going to be in the bow. So it is exactly six ribbons. So we will set this aside. And I'm going to use my Bodabra. And for those of you um, that need the recipe, sign up for my email. This is going out in the email tomorrow for those of you that wanted the bow recipe. I actually put it on a recipe card um, for the printout, so it's super cute. So this is the same recipe we're going to be doing tonight because we have four inch and a half ribbons, just like this. And then we have two, uh, two and a half inch ribbon. Now you can do these. Um, if you want to do all six inch and a half, if you want to do three and three, it's fine. The formula will still work. What it does create is an 11 inch bow measured from the loops out, not the tails out. So if you're looking for something that's just 11 inches in diameter, um, this will do it for you. So I think this is how I'm going to lay it out. So just like that. The base is just a 14 inch Dollar Tree wreath base. Yes, ma'am. Okay, dovetail. Get into the habit of always doing your steps the same. This way you don't forget. So dovetail is just take your wired edges, bring them together. You're going to cut from the folded side down here to the wired end. 
And depending upon how deep you want your V in your ribbon will determine where you start your um, V. So you get a flawless finish. No more of the cutting in and cutting in and hoping you meet in the middle and you don't splice. Stellar J. Um, so this one, because our word will run, um, what is this, horizontally, um, super simple um, shortcut. Somebody showed us this last time, so I'm just going to go with that because nobody wants to watch me struggle. It's painful. Um, so I have a way of doing it. We're going to go 10 inches in, so 10 inch tail. We're going to gather. And then we are going to twist. Now, if you look at this, all right, we've got words that go one way, and then when we do our loop, they're going the other way. Well, we're gonna go ahead and put that in. We're gonna measure out our five and a half inch loop. So I'm not gonna worry about if it's up or down right yet. I just wanna make sure we're out five and a half inches. And then from here, I need it to go the other way. So I'm just going to simply twist it in the other direction. Let's see if we can twist it this way. It likes to struggle a bit. Then we're going to go up and over. We're going to measure out another five and a half inches. And then we're out with a 10 inch tail. Linda, if you already signed up for the newsletter, you will get the, the bow recipe. Mm -hmm. I told everyone, I think last week that um, when we did the bow class, um, it would be coming out on the 20, what is tomorrow? The 24th. Mm -hmm. Cause we had already previously gotten the news um, letter. It goes like I draft it a week in advance, but look now our loops and our tails are exactly the same. It's the only way you can do it. If you have a vertical design going, it's just gonna be that way. There's nothing you can do to make it like have your snowman going this way or having your snowman that way. Although somebody said they um, measured out the ribbon that they would need for it. Um, where it met in the middle, they simply cut it and then stapled it. And that was how they got snowman to go this way and snowman to go this way. So. And then if you wanted to, you could always take a snapshot, too, of the recipe she's got on the screen. Do you like this better than the Easy Bow Maker? Yes, because space, it's so much better. And I have the Easy Bow Maker. I have it sitting up on my shelf. Um, it's just so big. And this is super small. I just set it on my work table, and we're good to go. I just said, I don't think I did. I only get the Monday email. That's the newsletter. That is the newsletter. <clears throat> so, so it'll be, it. it'll be there tomorrow. Okay. So yes, it will be in the, cause that's October 24th newsletter. So same thing. We're doing a nine and a half inch tail and we're doing a five inch loop. So because our pattern runs horizontal, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to measure our five inch loop. Okay, and then we're simply going to twist it back. I'm trying to find a way that it'll lay better. Maybe like that. Okay, let's pull that in a little bit. So we got five inches. And then we'll go up and over. Oops. There's that one. That one's going to be a little too short, but we'll measure right about there and then back out to nine and a half inches. Cut. Sam asked us why we made the decide to move so far. <laughs> why? We wanted the weather. We moved strictly for the weather. We knew that we wanted small town living, but still close to a big city. And we wanted to retire someplace that had rain. I mean, we've lived in California for me, 58 years. I was tired of perpetual sun every single day, having the seasons look nothing, slightly remote, 
Yep. Um, so we we went where we wanted our climate to be. Plus we wanted to be more in a forest-like setting, which we are in. Yeah, California um, has too many fires. We're also next to, to a couple beautiful lakes. The closest lake we're close to is, is Mayfield Lake, and we're only literally like eight minutes from the boat dock. And we're completely surrounded by Christmas tree farms. Yep. So we love that. Okay, so this one is ribbon number three. It's a nine inch tail. And we're gonna do a four and a half inch loop. So up and around. Let's measure out our tail and make sure we are right where it needs to be. A little bit more. Just an easy bow maker, but I never use it to pigs keep falling out. See? Um, what we really had to do, right? We had to really hammer those pegs in. Once we hammered them in, they stayed. But but then you can't really store it because the right. pegs are in the way. Yep. And then, so. Um, what? I got to get back to the thing. That's the screen here. Oh. Um, brushes and boards said if you drill through the bottom of your peg, it's going to fall out again. But yeah, like Kat said, it makes it harder to store. Yeah, my big thing is I always stored it like vertical, I would just kind of tuck it in my closet someplace. Um, but it's just a storage challenge for me. I love the bow maker, but like this one, I use it for my angel tree toppers. That works perfect for that. Um, this is ribbon number four. So this one is eight and a half inches is our tail length. And then our bow length is also four and a half inches. And I totally get it too. She said the bow length that intim intimidates me is the pro the large pro bow. Oh, yeah, we'll do that. Maybe we'll do that next week. We'll like, we'll try to tackle that one. Um, it's great for perfect bows. If you need a bow to look perfect every single time without, you know, that is the perfect bow maker for that. And I keep mine for that reason. So here's how you cheat. We've already measured the green one at four and a half inches. So if you put your fingers in the top and give it a slight pull, you know that they're both the same. But I still got to get this one out to eight and a half. Morrison, how do I sign up for the newsletter? I would love the recipe. Oh, just go to catscreationsandmore.com. You can either scroll down to the bottom or you can sit on that page for about 30 seconds and it'll get a little pop-up. Um, and that pop-up will say, hey, sign up for my email list and get the top 10 tools every wreath maker should have. And so you'll get that one as well. And it's pinned at the bottom. So you just click on the bottom pin, mm -hmm. comment, and it'll take you right to the shop. Oh, you pinned? Yep. Oh, from my tablet. From your tablet, yeah. Okay, ribbon number five. This one's going to be an eight inch tail, which are here. This is kind of nice because we're reintroducing this ribbon into our bow of all the colors that we use. So this needs to be right at four inches. We're gonna do our up and around. Make sure that sits right at four inches. Back out. Right about here. For eight. Dovetail. So you see that every single. And I think I went over all the ribbon. Um, this, this, and this, and this were all from Joann's, uh, Sam's Club, Hobby Lobby, and then the gingham is actually from Crinkle Designs. Here's my pin. And you can find them on their own website. It's kringledesigns.us. She said her husband and her are looking for land in the area with the barn and sheds. In Texas? Mm -hmm. Nice. I hope you find one. Devlin said I have both of Bodebra and Easy Bow. I use them for different things. They're just holders for her. 
Yes. And that's the nice thing is they're, besides making bows, they're just like an extra set of hands. Mm -hmm. So this last one, it's a seven and a half inch tail and a three and a half inch loop. Oops. Okay. Bring it in, back out. And then this one's all done. Okie dokie. There's that. That one needs to go back on my spool. And let's get beige pipe cleaner. You're so funny. Okay, so we make our pipe cleaner, get it prepped by putting it in a little U-shape. As you're picking this up, you're gonna press it and hold it like you're having a, like that triple decker club sandwich, you know, the one that we can never fit in our mouth. And then we're gonna take, you're gonna drop your pipe cleaner right down the center. You're gonna hold it at the bottom and then just twist. Twist the stack and not the pipe cleaner. It's so much easier on your hands because we can hold it, which is why I use a pipe cleaner because it's got some, you know, it's got some weight to it. Charles said, yeah, they were around the Waco area. I thought we were even at the time looking at homes in the Waco area. Mm -hmm. We were. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to get my flip board. Back there. Okay. So my fluff board is simply a 24 inch by 24 inch by one inch thick uh, piece of wood. I have this one custom built by friend. Um, and then I just took an inch and a half to two inch C hook or cup hook and it just gets screwed right to the center. All this does is to hold my um, ribbon so it doesn't slide. I need a flat surface when I'm building my bows. So that's why the fluff box never worked it was elevated and I need flat so fluffing first you separate loops from tails start at the top of your stack so we're going to go loop to the left tail to the right we're going to go over to the bottom and go opposite so we're going to take our tail to the left and our loop to the right okay so tails are opposite our loops are opposite, tails are opposite, and then we're going to do the same thing here, but now we are going to um, do the opposite, meaning our loop is going to go to the right and our tail is going to go to the left, go to the other side, do the same thing. Here's my tail, here's my loop, so that now it's staggering or alternating your loops from your tails, but making them go alternating all the way down. So each time you pull one down, like we're gonna go back and follow the original pattern. We're gonna do loop and tail, go over, here's my tail, here's my loop, go back over, we're gonna go loop and tail, and loop and tail. And then here, rather than have these two lay on top, I'm going to actually just deviate from the pattern, which as a wreath maker you can do, as long as what you do up here, you do the opposite below. So this way I don't have solids on top of solids. And then I'm going to take the top. Here's my gingham. It's going to follow that original. And then we're doing that here. So now everything is laid flat okay so when you're fluffing now we work from the top here you're gonna pick up the top two you're gonna put your fingers inside this is why we use um, wired ribbon is it holds its shape we'll do the same thing here and here and then we'll go ahead and do this one I'm going to put the little Christmas tree 
kind of off to the side like that. Here I'm going to put my tree in here. Jonathan, hi Kat, you're a great teacher. I've learned so much. Thank you. You're so welcome, Donna. Charlotte said the same thing. Oh, well, Pam said the same thing. I feel you're a great teacher. Thank you, Pam. Okay, and then the bottom two. Remember, you're the designer, so whatever you want to see where, just move it there. If you want to integrate your tails into your bow, integrate your tails. I just prefer to keep them to the sides so that if I'm doing a sign like this one where I need to make sure I don't have tails coming in here and in impacting my words, it's nice if I just have them all in one place. And then now we're just going to put those little curls back in our ribbon just by doing this. I think this one's turned. Hi, welcome. There we go. Had it upside down. Up. Oh, I love the board. Yeah, we had one of my best friends make that for us. Well, this was my, I needed something not only to hold my board while it that if I made my bow like when I was done just snap a picture of it on the board and we're done so this is kind of like a display and then you just make it look all pretty so whatever you want to see where just move it there so there is our bow for this it's going to go off the opposite way I put it on just like that Move this to the side, and now we need on this one. It's nice because they already put the holes in the side, so I'm simply going to remove the price tag. I'm going to take that sticker off, and then we're going to get our floral wire, which is 22 gauge floral wire. And I'm going to take about 12 inches of it. There's one. There's two. And I always like to build from the back side because some people take their um, wire and they put it out to the side, which makes it like a spinner. Um, if you want your sign to lay flat, then build it from the back which simply means take and build. We're going right over the hole in the back and just twisting about five times and you get a slight little elevation. We'll do the other side. Sure, yeah, that sign came from the tractor supply. That's Kat's new favorite store. Right now. It is. Steve doesn't even ask me to go to tractor supply now anymore. Because I'm like, oh, look at this. We could make a wreath with this. Okay. That's it. My biggest issue with signs, I always put them in too deep. Yeah, you just kind of want to float them on the top. So, put them in just a touch. There is our sign. Let's get our wreath. Let's put this. Here's our wreath. Let's see. I'm going to kind of place this a little on the high side, kind of right up in here. It looks super cute. Um, I need to make sure, number one, that our ribbon is going in the right direction. So this is going to kind of go up. It's kind of hard to float it for looks. It's going to kind of sit right here. So I'm going to go ahead and place that. And then we're going to get ready to show you how wonderful this looks when we embellish it. So um, we are going to utilize those spaces that we had on our interior. Remember the interior ones we cut out? We're gonna take those spots because we already know, hey, it already hit the frame. And I'm just going to tuck it down and I'm gonna hold it at the, the depth that I want it to be at. Actually, I want it a little bit higher. 
Um, let's go over one right about here. I want it up a little bit more. Oh, I was like, where'd you go? <laughs> He's like, it's cold. Um, so two twists. We're going to kind of go over here. Push this back. There's my pipe cleaner. Two twists. Kind of push that in. I want to make sure that I'm on opposite sides of my frame. Okay, come on down. If I was to tuck it and pull it all the way down to the frame, I know what you're saying. Yes, it would be buried. So now it's right in there. Look how sweet that is. Okay. So up in here is where our bow is going to go. And yes, I know it's going to impact a little bit of what we've done on the side, but I'm okay with that. I have a plan and a purpose. Okay. So I'm looking at, I want to make sure that my bow does not cover the chickens and does not cover the safe. So it kind of needs to sit here. With that being said, um, it pretty much determines where everything is going to sit. So let's go ahead and get this in. I got it on one side. I just needed to move it to the other. Because otherwise you have pipe cleaners on the same side. So I'm going to push and tuck this down. So again, you don't want to take it all the way to the frame because it'll compress everything that you just did. It needs to do the same thing like Steve says. It needs to float on the top. Yeah. Said, I remember there was a place you bought your shipping boxes from. I've got some people who want me to ship them a lease. Never done that before. Uline or Amazon have the best prices. Uline costs um, less for the box, but you have to pay for shipping. Amazon, if you're an Amazon Prime shopper, um, the boxes take longer to arrive, but shipping on most cases can generally be included. Okay, so I'm just taking and fluffing my ribbon, just like so. Let's make sure we've got it somewhat centered. If your bow is elevating, it's like flying a little higher than you want it to, take your mesh that's underneath and reposition some of your deco mesh. Okay, so there's that, right? That's kind of where it's all going. Well, um, okay, so this is where I was like, oh, I have the chickens, right? So um, I had my wonderful friend, Gail, a long time ago, Dollar General came out with these chickens. So they have made an appearance in quite a few of my wreaths, but, He's not, he's not Christmassy. So how do you dress a chicken? So I was like thinking, oh, I could take and put a cute little bow around him and he would be really super cute. And then I've been struggling sometimes with design and creativity. I'm like, Lord, I really need to tap into your talents um, for creativity and just uniqueness. And so I took, um, if you've ever been to Hobby Lobby, Hobby Lobby has these adorable, like, little snowman pics, right? And I was like, hmm, um, I need to borrow your hat. So I literally pulled his hat off. Um, and then he was also wearing this adorable little scarf. So this is what the pic looked like. And I dissected the pic. You guys have known me to do this before. I will pull them all apart. So I took his scarf off. Um... And look, the scarf is just perfect, and it's all festive and all done, and it fits my chicken just perfect. It makes them all festive, 
And then um, his little hat, I just added more fluff to the inside of my pumpkin to, or the snowman to his hat. And then we're gonna glue the Santa hat onto my chicken so that he is festive chicken for our Christmas chicken wreath. So. No, no feathers, but she's adding a scarf and a hat. Uh, so he's getting a scarf and a hat. So I'm just gonna go around the outside of his hat with my hot glue gun. And I'm simply gonna glue this on where I want it to stay. Cause I just, I don't want it to cover his eye and I don't want it to cover his beak but he's got a little wire that goes all the way down into his little Santa hat. And there we have Santa chicken, right? And Santa chicken's going to kind of go and he's going to lay in here. He's going to kind of take this little space occupying here for our little Santa chicken. Um, because as a wreath maker, we get, we get penalized. We get dinged by the shipping companies to ship wreaths because it doesn't matter how lightweight our products are. They automatically stick us into an elevated shipping rate profile. Um, so I don't take the, um, the gravel or the beans out that is in my shelf setters anymore. I leave them in um, because it gives it some weight to this. So I am going to remove my pipe cleaner that's right here because that's kind of right where my little chicken's going to nest. And I'm going to use... 22 gauge floral wire again because it's the thickest wire that I'm comfortable using. If people want to take him out and use him in their decor and just leave this, that's fine. Um, that's why I try not to ruin said chicken. So right underneath his little wing, we're going to take and wire in our 22 gauge floral wire just like this and I always just kind of do a little crisscross so it doesn't pull all the way through so that's all set and let's see do we need to glue him on the top with a little Santa hat or will he be okay let's go ahead and nestle him in um, I might want to put one a little closer to his neck so that we can kind of keep him a little snug to the board. Maybe you could put the wire up through the uh, scarf. Or uh, under his scarf. Yeah. It's on this side, so I think we're okay. Cheryl said, I don't know if your real chickens would go for the Christmas decor. But I'm it'd going be fun to... to see you try it. We need to get power out there. That's one thing we got to get. Um, and we're working on that because I already have a light up chicken that's going on my chicken coop. So I will be decorating my chicken coop for the holidays. It's just, you know, you need to do that. Okay. So now I'm going to take and wire my chicken right into the bottom of my wreath. Oh, it's so cute. I love it. Oh, wait. It's just going to get better. Sometimes when you ask for things from God, he does, um, he gives you abundance. He gives you more than you ever asked for. So I told Steve, I was just sitting out here listening to Christmas music. Um, and, uh, I'm like, I had all this crazy inspiration. So I was like, I have to tap into that as quick as I can before I lose it. So I have wired his lower half in. So his lower half is not going anywhere. And now we need to wire him his upper half, which is just going to go right in here, right next to my sign. Because it says the chickens were nesting all snug in their beds while egg laying, while visions of egg laying danced in their heads. So I guess we know what a chicken dreams of. They dream of eggs, laying eggs. Okay. There we go. Charles, I can't tell you how many times I've asked him for design help. He always comes through. 
right? Okay, so there's our little chicken inspiration. And remember those areas where I told you, I'm like, mm, I want to kind of go in there and add a little bit of um, raffia as well. So um, let me fix my ribbon under my chicken. So on the areas where we have the pine, we are going to take just a touch of raffia. So I'm going to do the same thing. So if your raffia is ever really super thick, you can go in between and split it. And then it gets it into that more manageable state, right? So just like this. So once we do that, I am just take about six inches and just kind of go back and forth with our raffia because we want that rustic feel. This is gonna go right underneath our little pine branch. Cause that's kind of like, that's a chicken bed, right? They're in the little straw. So we're gonna snip that, tuck that down behind our loop. And then what we're gonna be doing for each of those loop areas is I have this little pine branch here and there's exactly six. There's one of those things, it's a god thing. So we're gonna take and tuck a little pine branch in the bottom. So I'm gonna glue that. It's gonna go right on top of my pipe cleaner, right to my raffia, just like this. So we have that pine with the pine branch and the raffia. Okay, we'll let that one sit. Um, while that one's gluing, let me grab another one. I guess I don't need Snowman Man anymore. He just Poor met his snowman. early demise. He served a purpose, a very useful purpose. Okay. Go over here. I do the same here. Tuck. Trust that I have colored raffia for fall. Have you seen any red and green for Christmas? I have not, but I would probably check uh, Amazon. If anyone has it, Amazon probably would carry it. So I'm doing the same thing. This one doesn't want to come off. So large dollop of glue. Right to the base of our pine. It's only going to get better. I promise you I'm not even done yet. Okay. So there's those. This is the one I probably should have kept, but we'll just add a pipe cleaner so I can show you what happens when you cut one and you're like, hmm, I probably should have left that one there. My arms weren't long enough for that. So here's these back and forth. So, like Steve was nice enough to get my pipe cleaner. Pipe cleaner goes right through. And then we're going to tuck it right on both sides where quick, our pipe cleaner went. Quick cheat to add stuff. Quick cheat, yes. And then get that right in. This is my pipe cleaner. I don't use pipe cleaners because they stick in that um, snowball mesh. So, oh, there Kathy we go. Nonclair said, um, Cheryl, I found some at Dollar Tree. Small package, but they have red, green, and tan. Oh, nice. Dollar Tree is coming through, man. Yeah. They are just really elevating their look. Thank you, Kathy. Okay, same thing. We just went to the Dollar Tree for the first time. Up here? Up here. Yeah, they had 
and they don't really have an awful lot. So these make oh, like little cool. cups. So each of these is like, it has like four. So it actually makes a little cup on these. I'm actually gonna post this on the chicken site, the chicken <laughs> Facebook site. They'll be like, hey, look, here's a wreath for chicken lovers. Okay, so there's one. Um, we'll take that and we'll integrate it. It was a little small. I need one a little bit longer. There we go. So one. This will look good on our door. Our door is green. That is a beautiful blessing to come see. Thank you, Maria. Two, three. See, now I was telling you guys, I'm like, I knew there was a reason I wanted to keep these. So a nice little cone. There's that one. I'm attempting to do this as fast as I can. Um, let's just see if we can strip that. And yes, we can. Okay. Same thing. Nice little bundles. Tuck them right inside. And then sadly, there's just going to be one, but it'll be under. But hey, Rosa, this is just adorable. Is the mesh difficult to find? No, it's yeah. actually really easy. Just look for a cotton drift mesh. Okay. okay, and then we've got that one. I think Irvina asked earlier, is this for sale or are you going to want to keep it? Um, this Open actually it is sell. <laughs> I have this one listed. So it is available in my shop. It is the only one that I will be making. But so. it's fine because you did say if it doesn't sell, we'll keep it. Yeah, I said, and if it doesn't sell, I'm okay with that. <laughs> so it is available. So you can find it at catscreationsandmore.com. If you want to be the one and only person who has a legitimate chicken Christmas wreath, um, then is you, it just the listing of the sign? Yeah, you'll just see the sign. Yeah, because I don't want to give it away. I don't want to like do a demo and list it with the. And I forgot to glue my pine piece on. So I wanted the ones that had the little icicles in it. So it's like a little frost. There's that one. And then we have this one. That one's all done. So this was literally the last, the last of the last. Had to tuck my pipe cleaner first. Okay, there we are. Let us flip them around. Not weird. I just like flung that. Here it goes. All right. One last embellishment. What does the sign say? What are chickens dreaming of? I guess it's what they would ask Santa, Santa chicken for. We'll see. What is it? Okay. He is adorable. Did anyone? Oh, uh, let's see. Not yet. Oh, Cheryl, Cheryl did. Eggs. Right, so it says visions of egg laying. 
So I did do research in chicken stew. Some chickens actually um, lay the green eggs. So the green eggs and not with ham. Um, these are gonna go right in that little nestled thing and they have their own little bow that says Noel. So they're like little chicken presents. Um, so they're gonna kind of go right underneath our little bow like this. They're like little egg presents. So I was looking at that to see, do I want the bow at the bottom or do I want the bow to be on the top so that you could tell that it was like a little chicken present. What do you guys think? Bow below or bow above? So that is bow below. They have their own like little Noel bow or we do the bow above. So they get nestled in and then they would have little Uh, let's see what you guys come up with. Right. Janie says below. Bushes and board says below. Below. You guys all say below. Well, I guess that answers that question. So I can start gluing my eggs in. Yep. Yeah, Kathy asked me too. And I also said below. Below. Yeah, I was like, hey, what should we do? Because I was like, oh. So reading the sign, the sign says they're dreaming of egg laying. So I was like, wouldn't that be cool if I could find a little gift bag and put Santa's, like, he would have a little gift bag with, like, this is where way too much creativity goes into your designs. Um, then that would have, like, little eggs with little bows on them. So all of these are hand-tied little bows. So um, the ribbon for that was from Joann's. So just like that, little hand tied bows. So they're just tucked right below. I'm trying really hard not to glue my finger to the wreath. So we have, I just sat here while I was waiting for the live to go live, um, gluing all of my, making all my little bows for my little eggs. A lot of practice with these bows. Yeah, from making the angel tree toppers, right? Get this one. They're all such adorable. I'm trying to flip his. Let me pull. There we go. Flipping, flipping. Thank you. Well, let me have the big one, the bigger one. Let's go here. So that's why the little, um, whatchamacallit, the pine pick that has like that little cup in it was like perfect for tucking the eggs right into the inside because it goes with the sign. Right underneath. Just as I would have said the middle of the egg. <laughs> what do you mean the middle? I was going to actually try to see if I could wrap the little eggs mm -hmm. with like enough ribbon to make them look like packages. And I was like, okay, seriously, at some point we need to just stop. Alan French said, where did you get the eggs? Uh, they were from Hobby Lobby at Easter. I actually get the speckled eggs. They come in a little bag and they're all different colors. Didn't we find them at Michael's too? 
Uh, Michael's had them originally, but Hobby mm. Lobby started carrying them. And so every year we would just pick up a new bag. Yeah. Hope this off quite a bit, huh? Uh, just this one. We need a new glue stick to put this on. And tuck that in. And then once again, finish fluffing your bow. And now we have officially can put this down in our record books for having made an official chicken um, Christmas wreath. So a must have for chicken lovers everywhere. So what do you guys think? There it is. In all its glory and splendor, exactly. That is our finished design. Any questions you all have? I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. And um, I think... Oh, and where are you tapping into your Easter supplies? Where? Yes, I was tapping into my Easter supplies. I actually have a chicken supply uh, basket. So it has the chickens and all the chicken eggs and chicken wire and raffia in it. So it wasn't that hard to tap into it. It was just how far do you want to keep going, yeah. you know, with your, your design and theme. But I think we did a really good job in nailing the whole chicken theme on this. All right, everyone. Well, thanks for joining me. And uh, I hope to see you guys next week, Friday at 5 Pacific, 7 Central, and 8 Eastern Time. Have a very amazing work week, and I will talk to you soon. Bye for now.